Today, I'm reviewing the Outdoor Vitals Ventus Active Hoodie, but looking at it for hiking, backpacking, and alpine climbing. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. For a bit more than half a year now, I've been wearing the Ventus Active Hoodie from Outdoor Vitals as a mid-layer. It's advertised as a solution for backpacking, and while I do some of that, I also do a heck of a lot of climbing, both at the crag and in the alpine. So today, I'm reviewing the Ventus from the perspective of, yes, a hiker and backpacker, but also an alpine climber who takes this garment to the extremes of heat generating work, as well as heat sapping cold temperatures. First is temperature range. I'm not using hyperbola here. It has managed the largest temperature range of any mid-layer I've put on. Now, of course, that requires coupling with the right base layer, and I have done a whole video on base layer and mid-layer combinations. But for that to work, both garments need to do the job, and the Ventus has done the job. I've worn it in temperatures as high as the upper 50s Fahrenheit and down near zero, and I've been both working hard and resting across all these temperature ranges. Maybe both the simplest and most impactful thing I can say about it is that I've never had to take it off and even when out belaying, so standing around on an ice climb, I haven't had to layer over it. Outdoor Vitals credits this remarkable temperature range to a new fabric technology that allows the fabric to expand like the spring at the micro level when you move, creating space in the fabric for the heat to escape. When you don't move, those springs close up, trapping in heat. Next is breathability and weather resistance. Breathability is a bit of a double-edged sword because if a garment is too breathable, you lose both insulation and water resistance. Not breathable enough, and you have a sweat box wrapped around your torso. When just moving around, like say on a hike, a backpacking trip, or an alpine approach, I can feel a stiff wind through the Ventus, but not a breeze. So in terms of wind resistance, it felt kind of like a fleece, but very much unlike a fleece, I was able to wear it while climbing tripping ice, which was soaking through my climbing partner's soft shell. While he was commenting on needing to switch to a full hard shell, Definitely gonna be hard shell for us. <laughs> For me, with the Ventus, the water just beat it up and then proceeded to freeze on the surface. I simply brushed the now ice off when I got done with my climb. Another way the Ventus is not at all like a fleece is the weight. You've heard me talk about my tried and true cloud later jacket that I've been turning to for over a dozen years. Well, my cloud later weighs 15.65 ounces, whereas my Ventus weighs 7.5 ounces. Even if I go like for like to a garment with a hood and no hand pockets, my Patagonia R1 hoodie weighs 9.8 ounces. But speaking of vertical terrain, yes, I've climbed ice in it, but I've also mixed climbed and rock climbed in it over very abrasive granite. Not a mark, nothing. The Ventus can take a pounding. From a comfort perspective, I would say this. It's not comfortable to put on. It's extremely comfortable once it is on. I've never once felt restricted in my movement. This freedom of movement is helped by the fact that the Ventus is not a yarn. It is smooth textured and slides easily over my base layer rather than clinging to it. It is also tailored to an active cut around the torso to keep dangling fabric out of your way. That's great for a climber, for sure. But it doesn't stretch much at the bottom cuff, so you're gonna have to bring in your shoulders and arms to squeeze into it. That can be a problem if you wanna change layers back and forth throughout the day. The plus side of that same tighter cut around the waist though, is that the Ventus tucks in very well for cold days when you are never gonna to wanna to take it off. I don't notice bulk or restriction when I bring my legs up. Which brings us to features. Another reason the Ventus doesn't feel bulky when it is tucked in is that, as I mentioned, it has no hand pockets. For me, that's a big upside but it can be a bummer if you're wearing it as your true outer layer, say on a warmer fall day. It does have a chest pocket, but it is accessed through the quarter zip rather than through its own zipper. 
The inner pocket is then a deep and flexible mesh that drops your items down to your chest and away from your neck. I found using it is just as easy as a standalone pocket. The hood can't go over a helmet, so again, a downside if you're a climber who wants to adjust to differing weather, activity rates, winds, or needs to communicate. But just like other alpine-specific garments that have under-the-helmet hoods, not a big deal when the conditions are cold and the hood is going to stay on. Whether under a helmet or hiking or backpacking, I found the insulated hood to allow good mobility without digging into my head sharply or cutting my vision. The waist does have a drop back hem and a drawstring to keep it cinched over your pant waist if you don't have it tucked in. And thumb loops let you keep your wrists covered even when taking gloves on and off all day or to help you pull your arms through yet another layer. The bottom line is that the Outdoor Vitals Ventus has rapidly become my go-to mid-layer for cold weather activities. For me, no. this is a garment I put on when I'm pretty sure I'm not ever going to take that mid-layer off. Its wide temperature range makes that possible on both crisp fall or spring days, as well as icy cold winter days. And if I'm never going to take it off, it better be durable and weather resistant too. And it is that. I think it may be the wrong choice for you if you plan on taking it on and off many times while on the move or don't want to tuck it in like I do and therefore would miss the hand pockets. So while Aventus may be advertised as a backpacker solution, I found it to do just about everything I need it to do to help me survive in the high alpine. After using it for half a year, I recently bought one for my wife and I wouldn't risk my marital bliss on just anything. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button and maybe do us the honor of ringing that bell and subscribing. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. Is there any particular features you look for in a mid layer? Let us know in the comments section. We'll see you again next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.